Hello Internet, I'm going to answer your questions about making the switch from MacBooks, Apple computers to PCs. I've gone to the dark side. And while I answer your questions about that, I'm going to unbox a new PC laptop. So this is the Razer Quartz 13 inch razor blade. I recently tested out the 15 inch razor blade, the 4K version, which was pretty cool. You can check out that link in the description. But this will be fun for me since it's a 13 inch. I'm only used to that size when it comes to the smaller MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air, so this will be fun. Ooh, cool packaging. Oh, come on, Razer, you couldn't have made a pink charger to match your pink computer. I've made hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of videos that are now unlisted on this YouTube channel. Ever since 2001, everything that I've done has been built on the back of a MacBook Pro. So when I decided to upgrade that 2011 or 2012 MacBook Pro to the 2017 MacBook Pro with a KB Lake processor, but not yet the eighth generation Intel Core i7, because Apple is always pretty slow to upgrade their processor. I was slightly disappointed and that began my journey on seeing what PC laptops were available So this started as a very selfish pursuit on my part. I wanted more power I didn't want to have to use dongles and I needed it to be portable this thing This is my main gear PC amazing desktop editing machine But a lot of times you need that power on the go, right? Oh my gosh. Look at this pink packaging. Here we go. Oh, oh my gosh. So I've seen videos of this laptop and as I'm viewing on the camera, I don't think you can understand just how pink this is. It looks much pinker in real life, wow. Ooh, this is a good size and it's thin and it's light. The Razer Blade 15 is pretty heavy. Oh my God, this is sick. Dang, I am so ready to rock this. So it has two USB type A, the normal USB, and then two USB C. Also Thunderbolt 3 compatible and then a headphone jack. So it charges via the USB C. We're gonna plug this in and then we'll test it out. Oh my gosh. Look a pink background. All right, I'm gonna let this charge. I'll play around with it a little bit, but I went to Twitter and I asked if you guys had questions about me totally switching my creative workflow to PC land and what my experience has been with that. And I'm not holding back. This is the raw and the real. So buckle up guys, okay? <laughs> Super soft TV right off the back. Uh, I'm getting a MacBook Pro tomorrow. Hey, a lot of creators nowadays are very curious about Final Cut Pro and you need a Mac machine for that. Luke from Linus Tech Tips and Floatplane, what has your biggest pain point about the experience? So I've reviewed probably five or six laptops this year. It was a lot about my personal journey and trying to find a laptop that was perfect for me, but then of course I shared it with you guys. I think the biggest pain point was consistency with hardware. I was on the phone with support for hours trying to figure out a problem and they would have to log into my computer and, and have them update things because oh no, like my keyboard doesn't work or something. I love Razer and have enjoyed their computers thoroughly, so I don't want to trash them since they sent me this computer. Thank you, Razer. However, when when I was testing out the Razer Blade 15, the graphics card, the reason why you go over to PC land because you want that Nvidia graphics processing power, right, for all of your video work. The GTX 1070 just wasn't being utilized to its fullest potential. If you monitored its performance, it would never go above like 11%, even when I was exporting super graphics heavy stuff out of Premiere. After doing all of the troubleshooting, trust me, I tried everything. I eventually sent it into Razer and their fix, they had to replace the entire motherboard. But because the Razer Blade 15 wasn't just sent to me, I sent it to them as a normal consumer, not as YouTuber Sarah, and they got it fixed and sent back to me in like two weeks. So yes, I had to send in the computer because it wasn't working properly. But after they fixed it, now it works great. It's super fast. But my point is the biggest pain point is probably the quality control for the most part. If you get a MacBook, it's going to work and it's going to work great right outside the box. Hey, it might not have the latest processor and it's not going to have a dead dedicated graphics card, so it might be a little slower in things like Premiere, but guess what? It's gonna work. So that was my biggest pain point. But once they're working, they, they're great, right? <laughs> I'm surprised you never took a look at the Surface Book 2 15 inch. It's a powerhouse and has a tablet functionality, which is cool for creativity. I actually did check out the Surface Book and that was one of the laptops I had a really difficult time with. None of the hardware worked out of the box. It was a very terrible experience. So that kind of jaded me with the Surface Book, even though yes, once it was fix it worked great but i just didn't have a good experience with it but microsoft is making some really cool products and so i i, I never want to write them off because again i think it was just
just unique to me where I had a really bad experience when the majority of people love their Surface Books. How do you handle the Apple universe with mobile mixing with the PC universe with your computers? Uh, like iMessage, file sharing, do you have any workflow set up that make that easier? Such a good question. A lot of the reason why I'm on an iPhone and I've been on an iPhone for a while and I'm probably not switching anytime soon is because of the same thing that people say iMessage AirDrop. And it's just it's just a good experience. Don't hate me, but I love iPhone. But I will say this, it is much easier to switch your computer, your laptop to PC land than it is to switch over to Android, in my opinion. A lot of my workflow on my desktop or my computer involves SD cards and cameras and all of that. So having an SD card slot, having ports on my computer is much more important than having the ability to AirDrop. And when you need it for that purpose, I live off of Google Drive, so putting things on Google Drive is a good solve for me. Do you still use a Mac at all? Yes, actually, I do. As of February 2019, I still think Mac OS is better, easier, cleaner than Windows. So I still enjoy Mac OS very much. I still do a lot of email and just general web surfing on my MacBook, but when it comes to really any editing or anything that needs power, I go to this guy, I go to my main gear PC. When editing 4K in Adobe Premiere, what's the most important piece of hardware um, that you've seen in your test experiences, CPU, RAM, or GPU. I will say probably the most important two are the CPU and the RAM. So that's why last year in 2018, when every single PC laptop had the latest eighth generation Intel Core i7 or i5 processors, oh my gosh, isn't that more intriguing? Well, hey, now the MacBooks have caught up, great, but it's still more expensive. And before we know it, these PC laptops are already going to be on to the next generation of processors. So really it always goes back to being able to get more bang for your buck. A lot of these laptops, you can actually upgrade yourself. You can throw in 16 gigabytes more RAM into this. That's probably what I'm going to do. And you can also upgrade the SSDs and the storage so you can edit faster off your laptop. So CPU and RAM, I would say, is the, the two most important in Premiere. But then the GPU is a very close third because look, if you're color grading, if you have a lot of effects over these videos, that's when the GPU is gonna come in handy with rendering that out super quick. Okay, this is interesting um, because people say this a lot. Apple is just made for the artist. Is that a sentiment you shared? If so, how do you get past that? So the honest answer is I feel like five years ago, you didn't really have a lot of great PC laptops. Believe it or not, back in 2012, the MacBook Pro was the laptop because guess what? It had all the ports that you needed. It had a beautiful display. It had a lot of great software. And with the latest IO, it has two Thunderbolt ports, two USB 3 ports, and one HDMI port. But you know, now there's so many competitors and people who are really pushing the bleeding edge of technology. I mean, look at what Razer is offering, look at what Dell is offering. Like so many people have gotten into hardware that now I think the narrative is shifting to what is best for your workflow because you got options now. So basically I think that's a sentiment of the past and that narrative is shifting. Sometimes you just gotta go where the power is, right? And what is your wallet telling you? Because yes, you could probably get equivalent power from an Apple machine, but it's gonna cost so much more money. Last question, because I feel like this video is getting very long. Oh my goodness. Um, did you consider going all in in Final Cut Pro and Apple? No, because I do not like Final Cut Pro at all. I started on Final Cut Pro 7, then they changed it to X10, whatever you want to call it. I was just shook. I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to use this? I know they've updated with a lot of good professional features now. Hey, look at the pro on YouTube. You have Marquez. I just seen you have Jonathan Morrison, all amazing humans who are running opera operations on YouTube and they are all using Final Cut. So I do not want to belittle that video editing software. Just for me uh, in Premiere, if I need help on a big video project, maybe I'm working with another editor. In Timbuktu, we have to use Google Drive to collaborate. Well, the Premiere project file that that editor needs to help me with my video, Premiere keeps that as a very, very small file size. So the project file might only be four megabytes, super easy to share. If they have the media, they can just reconnect, relink the media, easy, boom. But that's just one thing. Long story short, it definitely comes down to personal preference. However, you have to consider what you want to do professionally. Are you a solo YouTube creator? Do you wanna go work with a production company? Is it collaboration? A big part of what you wanna do as a video creator, so you have to consider what are other people using? What is the industry moving towards? And I just don't think it's Final Cut. Do we, do we still have time to talk about this? Cause it's so pretty. Okay, first of all, this is the first razor blade 13 I've tested out 
And the trackpad action feels so much better than my Razer Blade 15 because that was one of the biggest reasons I didn't go with this. I like the XPS trackpad better than this. This was just very stiff. The trackpad's obviously a little smaller than the 15. It's just way easier to get a hard click out of it. Okay, so let's talk specs real quick. They actually released a lot of quartz accessories and peripherals with this, like keyboard, a mouse, a mic. So if pink is your thing, you are in luck. Cause you know what? I think it takes as much confidence to rock this as a computer with a bright lime green logo like this one. It does also come in black, but this is an extremely limited edition. The color. Could I ever use a 13 inch computer? I usually say no, but now that I'm holding it, it's so light. You know, this, this definitely is going to feel better on an airplane. You know, it's not a 4K display like my Dell XPS, but hey, when it's so small, does it really matter? So it's full HD display, 1920 by 1080. And it has an NVIDIA GeForce MX 150 4 gigabyte graphics. And we'll have to see how that performs. It has a Whiskey Lake Core i7 processor, a Windows Hello compatible camera, and also 16 gigabytes of RAM, um, but the most important thing, it's probably the closest peach colored laptop we will ever come close to. It's not really peach, but you know, it's the same idea, right guys? I'm gonna edit this video and then maybe I'll have like a minute more to say about this to see if I could actually fit this into my everyday because wow, the weight difference already <laughs> is astounding. I'm actually on the way to the airport, but I want to wrap my thoughts up because I've been using it for the past few days. The fact that I got an export, a normal 10 minute video, uh, it was the Marie Kondo video, Marie Kondoing my office, and I exported in 11 minutes and 30 seconds, which I was actually pretty impressed with. It can handle my normal workflow. If a difference of five to seven minutes in an export doesn't really matter to you and you're not doing hardcore gaming, this could be a very portable editing gaming machine. Since I've been using the XPS 15 and the Razer Blade 15, that 4K touchscreen is just so good. And then when you go back to a 1080 display and it's also matte, I did miss the 4K screen actually. And I miss just the real estate. That's the biggest thing in Premiere. I need to be able to see what I'm doing. I think I'm a 15 inch laptop kind of gal. And hey, if you show up to meetings, if you show up in your coffee shop with a pink laptop, more power to you. Right, because I think it's cute. <laughs> I think it's cool. There you go. <laughs> it's a new episode of podcast tomorrow. I have a juicy brand deal for you. Um, oh God. Hi, this is Joanna Frankel calling. I'm the co-founder of Shut Up and Go, also the half of Damon and Joe. Make sure to subscribe to that on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the links in the description below. There's a YouTube channel for it where I'm posting daily clips so you can get your daily inspo. All right, let me know if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button down below for new videos every single week. And until next time, stay peachy, guys. Okay, bye.